time for just a little while that is from the six o'clock hour so yes we are here that is a civic vibes program we are here with you for yet another sunday and a very informative and interesting program awaits us all this afternoon we know in dominica we are going through what we call a snap election and this afternoon that is the topic under the microscope as it were where our specially invited guest from St. Kitts and Nevis, legal mind a lawyer, that is Mr. Dwyer Astafan, will be basically taking center stage this evening and going through that all important topic and the consequences thereof of snap elections in our region. And so you are in tune for a very interesting conversation here this afternoon. Like always, we always say that we cherish your comments we cherish your feedback each and every time. So it's your time as well to share what's on your mind with us. And to do that this afternoon as well, you can call into the program. That is a newly added feature that we have on this program. Yes, you can call in sometimes later to basically add your piece to the program this evening. The numbers to call, they are 245-2396. I, I know I said that a bit. Fast, so let me take it slow. It is 245-2396. For those of you outside of Dominica, the area code is 1767. And the next number, it's a DG number. The first one was a Lime. The DG number, it is 615-9470. I'll plug in that information in the chat so that those of you who did not catch it, then you can take a note in the chat just in case. You want to add your voice to the conversation here uh, this evening. Also to our website at Civic Vibes, it is www.civicvibes.com. That is where you can get all the information, what we are about, what we are doing. So please go to our website. Again, it is www.civicvibes.com. That is where we want to send you as well so that you can get all the necessary information as it pertains to what we are doing here at Civic Vibes. Unfortunately, Paula Celestine will not be here with us this afternoon, but I know she's locked in. So Paula, good evening to you in a very, very special way. You've been the co-host of this program, but we have brother Alvin Thomas, who is here with us as well this afternoon. So before I move across and ask brother Dwight Astafan, who is our guest this afternoon to introduce himself, let me say a hi and hello to brother Thomas. Greetings and welcome, sir. Thank you, Brother Lofty. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to our many um, viewers and listeners tuning into the program this afternoon. And a special good afternoon to my friend, uh, Brother Dwy Dwyer. Uh, good afternoon, my brother. Um, good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, it is again indeed uh, a pleasure <clears throat> to be here this afternoon. Um, I think our discussion this afternoon and uh, discussions we've had previously and discussion moving forward are uh, very important. I, I think important is even a mild word to use um, because what we are faced with in Dominica and the rest of the region, I must say, as a member of CARICOM, a member of the OECS, what affects one affects all. What we face in Dominica as it relates to our democracy, which is being undermined, is a serious, serious threat. <clears throat> and um, I look forward to the engagement this afternoon with our folks uh, who are listening and who will call in and to exchange some of those ideas with um, uh, Brother Dwyer. I think, Lofty, we have to move that dialogue from discussion now to action. And I'm sure we'll discuss some of that as we as we engage in the discussion this afternoon, we we are at the point now where we must talk and act at the same time, like they say, walk and chew up. <laughs> so, with that lofty, um, I'll be happy to 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 contribute a little further as the discussion unfolds. All right, brother Thomas, thank you very much for your opening words here, your opening remarks. So remarkable each and every time hearing from you, brother Thomas. Thank you very much for taking time of your Sundays and being part and parcel of the program right here on Civic Vibes. Before I get to that chat in terms of mentioning some of your names who are already here with us, let me move across to Brother Astafan, that is Dwight Astafan, that is, so that he can say his hi and hello and greetings to you guys out there. 
Good evening, Lofty. Good evening, Alvin. Good evening to your listeners and your viewers. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be invited to share this platform with you guys and participate in the conversation about matters of public interest in an island, which is a sister island, of course, of the region, but an island that is very special to me for a number of reasons. So thank you for having me. And I look forward to a healthy and productive conversation. All right, indeed. Brother Dwyer, trust me, my brother, you have a lot of fans in Dominic already. Eh? I can tell you that. <laughs> a lot of persons, once the promo went out and, and, and they saw Dwyer is on board, they say, wow, I must make time for that program. Well, I'm humbled by that. I can, I can single out a brother in the north of Dominica. That is brother Pat Corbett. This brother basically says, I, I just <clears> love how Pat Corbett, how um, brother Dwyer keeps batting on these programs. Street shooter. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Pat. I know you're listening. I know you're logged in. <clears throat> Those of you as well, the rest of you there. We have persons like Mali Ostry. You are there. Good evening to you. Unbreakable Corin Codrington Daly. You are there as well. Good evening to you. Ms. Daly, you have to give me uh, uh, some, some vitamins eh, after I finish pronounce your name, eh? because <laughs> Unbreakable Corin Codrington Daly. That is like four <laughs> names right there in one's diet. <laughs> but it's all well and good. Gemma Daniel, good evening. Janice Jajak, Pat Corbett. I told you Dwyer, Pat Corbett is there. He says, welcome back, Dwyer. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Yes, indeed. Dorian Dorival, <clears throat> these are the usual suspects. Clara, Clara Warrington, always there. Um, Eliza Luis Gums, there as well. Dei Jojo, good evening to you, my friend. Always tuned in as well. Miss Challenger, you're there. Popo, that is Marigold Popo, you're there. Um, Duveni, that is Watson Duveni. Well, Alvin is there with first. Brother Butran, good evening to you. That is Dave Butran. This brother is always, always locked to what is happening here on Civic Vibes. And not only always locked, he, he, he normally contributes in more ways than one. So, Brother Butran, thank you very, very much indeed for your contributions indeed. Shulin Gis, good evening to you. Shulon Gis, sorry. Shulon Gis, I want to be correct here. Shulon Gis, good evening. Judy Charles St. John says a happy Sunday. She's locked in. John Blanchard, that's my brother, the, the treasurer of the CCA movement in Dominica, always locked in as well. Good to have you, John. Peter Carbon, that's a former minister of agriculture under the United Workers Party government. Mr. Carbon is out of state, but this brother always makes time to tune into the program. Jules Lapinad, Veronica Pascal, Florence Batilia, Joseph Dover, um, and the list goes on and on. Marvella Defoe, Verney Vash, good evening to you. Jan Harry, Brother Stephen Astafan, good evening. Roy Francis, Lucinda, um, was it McDowell Thole? Is that yes, Lucinda McDowell Thole? Is that La Rock Martin Carril? Good evening to you, uh, Jasid, brother Jasid Leroy James. You're on. Good evening as well, Cheryl Bernadette Garraway. Uh, that's another one right there. Good evening to you, Helena It <coughs> Etienne Maliostra. I called you already, Emma Frederick, Margaret Wallace, Hodge Berridge, Sunshine G. Lloyd, Veronica Pascal. And the list goes on and on. Gertrude Dejan, you're there. Good evening to you. Jan Jan, Joseph, you're there. Dory Drago, you're there as well. These folks always keep coming back and back and back for the information. Um, Molly Bright, Yusila James, good evening. Augustina John, Jennifer Nicholas, um, Margot Larocque. <laughs> Margot, I saw you in action on Thursday and I, I, I thought Margot was really really going to be that, that kind of soldier, woman of the night. You really brought down the curtains on the beefer. Margo, good evening to you. Dressed all in white on a Thursday night. Gave a splendid performance indeed. Kingdom Citizen, good evening. David Labon, good evening. June Farrell, what's that? Um, Yasef Francis, Florence Francis, June Farrell, and the list goes on and on and on persons. I don't have time now to go through all your names, but the hundred plus of you guys who are there, we want to thank you each and every time for taking time off and just being part and parcel. Again, the numbers to call into the program, yes, you can call in. The numbers are 245-2396. Again, I want to repeat that, 
And also the DG line, it is 615-9470. Now we got that out of the way, we can now go to start our conversation here in earnesty with our brother, Dwyer Astafan. Folks, we are talking about the consequences of snap elections. That is what we are facing now in Dominica, but we are seeing it sort of creeping up or creeping in its head in our region. And so that is why we want to sort of have that conversation just to see if we can stem that in the tide in the interest of democracy. Let me move across to Brother Alvin Thomas so that he can get the ball rolling and then for sure, Brother Astafan will take it from there. Yes, Alvin. Thank you, Brother Lofty. Thanks um, again to our many listeners. Um, I know our discussion this afternoon deals with snap elections. And while it's a topic of importance to discuss, I think what we currently have, the situation that's currently unfolding in Dominica goes beyond the question of snap election. And by that, I mean, let's assume that the electoral process was okay, or it was, it was improved like you have in St. Kitts where Brother um, Dwyer is, or any one of the other islands, and you call a snap election. That in itself may have some concerns, which, which we will address, I'm sure, as it relates to snap elections. But I think our situation is even more unique because what we have, we have a snap election being called within the context of a tainted electoral process. That's the difference. When Barbados called their snap election a couple months ago or last year, whenever that was, they have a reform electoral process. So can you imagine now a snap election being called within the context of a tainted electoral process, the context of whereby your electoral list is, is messed up, your vote, you don't have voter ID, um, you have dead people voting, you have an electoral list that's showing 74,000 registered voters when your population is way below that. Listen to what, listen to what um, the, the joint mission, that is the, 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 the mission that was commissioned in August of 2019. That was the Commonwealth Secretariat, the OAS, and CARICOM. And in the submission of their report on the area of what was titled Key Elections Integrity Principles and Best Practices, the following observations were made. Representative democracy is the basis of the rule of law and secures the right of all people to participate in the political decision-making process of their countries. Genuine democratic elections, elections that are credible, inclusive, clean, and competitive provides the authority for democracy governance and ensure the peaceful transfer of power." Unquote. So, not only are we having a snap election, but we are having a, a snap election against the background of that observation made in 2019 to the, to the government. And, and, and further in those recommendations, as I'm sure we'll go into later on, not just this report, but reports prior to that, and even more current reports, um, namely, of course, the observation made by the CCG, clearly indicated to us that no further election should be held in Dominica unless we do something about electoral reform. It was, it was described by the CCJ as a tainted process. So I'm saying all of this to say that it's way beyond the question of snap elections, whether the prime minister under the constitution has the authority to call or not call a snap election, but against the backdrop of what we currently facing in Dominica in terms of our electoral process. 
And I think that is the kind of conversation I would like to have. Um, expand it beyond just the mere question of a snap election. Because as I said, in the normal scheme of things, if Barbados calls a snap election or St. Kitts calls a snap election, not that I'm saying it's a good practice, but they're doing so against the backdrop where their voters list may be okay, they have voter ID card. I mean, there's still room for improvement, but they, they're doing so against a complete different circumstances than what we do have right now. And that is what I would like to, to start off by way of the conversation as we look at the whole question of snap election. And to say, and to say finally, what we have or what we have faced right now in Dominica is that our democracy is at stake. Democracy is at stake. That's what's on the ballot. Not snap elections or anything else, or democracy as a people. All right. Thank you very much, Brother Thomas, for your opening salvo, as it were. Uh, let me now ask Brother Astafan Dwyer, that is, to chime in in the conversation based on what you heard from Brother Thomas. What, what, what are some of your thoughts amidst the amidst the snap election scenarios we are, we are having in the region lately, and also especially what he spoke about in terms of the tainted practices, Dyer. Yeah, well, I, I agree with what Alvin has said. Um, all I'm going to make a point or two on snap elections and the, the process of calling elections. The, the overall context is critical and the context is, from my understanding, a very imperfect arrangement that you have in Dominica. Not that ours is, is all that better, but we do have certain things here, perhaps which you do not have. Um, the first thought that I had lofty when I heard that the prime minister had asked the president to dissolve the parliament and issue the writ, the writ of election was the first thought that came to my mind was a thought of Dennis Byron. Dennis Byron, Sir Dennis Byron, who is a petition, um, that's neither here nor there, so Dennis Byron was engaged by your government to do an analysis of the electoral system and to provide recommendations. My understanding is that his report should have been delivered by now, but it has been delayed to March of next year. If I say anything that is inaccurate, Gentlemen, please correct me because I want to get it right. Yes, you're on track so far. Okay. It is my suspicion that Mr. Skerritt. Well, well, Dwyer, I don't want to disrupt you, but there's a letter that Sir Byron sent to the leader of the opposition. And he says the number one bullet, he says, I will present phase one report during the month of November 22 this month. So I just want to clarify that. The letter dated 6 November to the leader of the opposition <clears throat> from Sir Byron. He says in his penultimate paragraph, I think it is, finally, my proposal as to the timelines going forward are as follows. I will present phase one report during the month of November 2022 to Parliament table the Register of Electors legislation in December of 2022 with plans to enact it in January, 2023. I just thought I would stick, um, stick. Okay, so the letter that he wrote to the opposition leader and remind me, who is the opposition leader in Dominica? The Honorable Lennox Linton. He's the opposition leader? Yes. Still, okay, but he's yes, not the leader. He's not the leader of the opposition party, though. That's correct. That's correct. the leader. Is the opposition leader? He's in the still parliament? the leader of the opposition. Yes. In the parliament. Okay. Yes. All right. So whatever information Mr. Byron will have shared 
with Mr. Linton. I'm going to presume that he shared it also with Mr. Skerritt. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, okay, I'll leave that point there. It is my suspicion that Mr. Skerritt, from that communication or communications that he may have received with regard to what portends in the Byron report or his perception of what will come in the report that he may want an election before that report becomes part of the public record. My understanding is that there are some recommendations that are to be made in terms of improving and tightening the electoral process. And if Mr. Skerritt and most politicians, certainly most prime ministers are extremely opportunistic, he may have seen an opportunity here to call an election before the Byron report, which I'm also told is declared to be going to into law once it is received by the government. Again, that's a presumption, I could be wrong. But presuming that it will become part of the law, my suspicion is that Mr. Skerritt made a decision to have the snap election before the new laws came into place to tighten up the electoral machinery in Dominica. Now, he has said that he wants to phase himself out. So he will have his last term and then pass it on to whoever can win an election after he is gone whatever the odds may be, improved or not for his party, because he will have served his 25 or whatever years by that time, and out of the way, safe and secure, and the new leader and his or her colleagues will have to face that music when it comes. So short point, I believe he's being opportunistic to have this election. Having said that, I never agreed with the aspect of our electoral process that vests in the prime minister the authority on his or her own to cause an election to be held. It is fundamentally unjust and it is fundamentally undemocratic. Here is why it is unjust. The prime minister is a political combatant. He's running for a seat. You cannot be a judge in your own cause. You cannot call an election when it suits you. An election must be held. It must be predictable. I believe in fixed date elections, except if there's an extreme circumstances hanging there's, there are extreme circumstances hanging over the country, in which case a premature election must be had. For example, a successful motion of no confidence, some other catastrophe. So your constitution must allow for that. But when you have a, if England has the same thing, the UK, I don't think it is right there either. However, the British Parliament has nearly 650 people in it. And even though you may win with 330 or 40 seats, the majority of the people on your side are not in the cabinet. They are backbenchers. And they can do an awful lot to keep you on your toes, as we have seen in the English conservative government over the last few years. Cameron has fallen. Theresa May has fallen. This other one, Liz Truss has fallen. And we don't know how long the present prime minister will last. And a lot of that has to do with the backbenchers in parliament 
and the Parliamentary Conservative Party in England. So the numbers there may make that less offensive, but in little parliaments like ours, in little countries like ours, it cannot be just for a prime minister to decide when it suits him or her to have an election. Because the constitution which vests him with that power, typically like in our islands, vests him with too many other powers and he becomes a constitutional dictator. And the rule of law, the democratic principles, all of those things are set aside and made secondary to his primary interest which is his own political supremacy. So that can be right. Um, I made a note here just now. Another thing that is wrong with the system, and there are many things, but it cannot be right for a prime minister to be in charge of the electoral process and for him or her to decide who is going to have which job in the electoral office or on this or on that or whatever. Those things make a nonsense of democracy. The tragedy of it, Lofty and Alvin and Pat and all of those other people whose names you've called and more. The tragedy of it is that our people have been hammered into submission have been hammered into degradation, have been nurtured on a culture of entitlement, dependency, and underproductivity, both economically and socially. So we expect less of ourselves. We depend mostly for things that benefit us on somebody else, namely a politician, especially a prime minister who has liquidity and other resources to provide us with the comfort that we seek and our expectations are themselves low. So when he beats a drum and he tells us to jump up and put on his shirt, we do that. So all of this is a different point. I think it is important because electoral systems, whether they're good or bad, are not as important as the mindset and the culture of the people of the country. And it is, in my opinion, true of all of us in these islands. We are too submissive to politicians, our expe expectations of ourselves and of them are too low. We allow ourselves to be degraded and used for 30 pieces of silver we end up getting the short end of the stick and we believe we're doing well. And we celebrate, let me repeat it, we celebrate our own degradation. Now you had a big match in Dominica last week, right? In Rosso. Yes, there, yes, there was some protests oriented meeting in, in Dominica, yes, on the B front. And what happened after that? Everybody went home, right? Everybody did, yes. You cannot, you cannot, you're not going to change the country by being submissive. True. And the police not going to shoot down 300 people and they're not going to lock up 100 people because the country will become ungovernable. You have to decide if you've had enough, you've had enough and you take a stand. And no government, we saw it in the United States on January the 6th of last year, you see how fragile that government was? You see how fragile? Mm -hmm. None of these governments is as strong as it makes itself out to be. And a lot of people who go around putting on the shirts and shouting for them will put on another shirt in a heartbeat if that's the direction where the wind is blowing. True. True. So to Brother some extent, while I blame the system and I blame those who control the system, Ultimately, the control should be and can be in the hands of the people. And if you're going to take a little march and then you go home and you're not going to allow your presence to be felt, I'm not encouraging anybody to break the law. But if you don't stand up 
you will be put down. And this is what to me happened last week in Dominica. The election is going to take place. We know the result of the election. He will get five more years. He will leave when he feels like leaving and nothing will change. So I'm getting from you, Dwyer, you were saying that the people needs to take a stand based on their belief. Absolutely. You have to yeah. take a stand. Yeah. You know they say in Trinidad of Lofty, mm -hmm. in Trinidad they say, hit the front or else the front will hit you. <laughs> that, can, that can be interpreted in many different ways, Dwyer. You, you have one interpretation, interpretation at, at hand. Well, the, the front is hitting the people. Okay. I, said, I said it already. People are being degraded and they mm -hmm. don't know it. They're celebrating it. The expectations okay. are low. Standards are poor. Yeah. The post-independence Caribbean is no better off in terms of social and political consciousness than okay. the pre-independence Caribbean. And I'm not advocating colonialism. I'm saying our post-independence leaders have largely failed the people. And if the people elect people who are going to fail them, then it means the people have failed themselves. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Dwyer, I'm going to play a clip for you to hear, right? Alvin, I guess, heard that clip already, but it is always worth hearing again. And, and, and that will sure kind of put into context the decision that Scary took of calling that election a snap election, that is. What I'm going to let you hear, Dwyer, he made those statements at the independence celebration where he gave his speech on Independence Day, November 3rd. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt called the snap election, addressed the Dominican on December 6th. Now, Dwyer tried to juxtapose what you heard him said on December, on, on, on November, November 3rd, sorry, mm -hmm. to the announcement on December 6th. Take a listen. Take a listen. I wish to take this opportunity to address the issue of electoral reform. We made a commitment to the Dominican people in 2019 that we would engage an independent party to look at the issues raised about electoral reform. We acted promptly in engaging Sir Dennis Byron, former president of the Caribbean Court of Justice, former Chief Justice of the OECS Supreme Court and the Privy Council to serve as sole commissioner to investigate and advise on the issues. While the government engaged him, Sir Dennis does not report to the government. The Electoral Commission has been the coordinator of the activities of Sir Dennis, and he has been working very closely with the Commission in carrying out his responsibilities. At the request of the Electoral Commission, government made additional funding available to the commission to enable the drafting of new bills to address changes to strengthen our electoral laws. We expect that when the process has been completed and the draft bills approved by the electoral commission, they will be shared with the government, opposition, and other stakeholders for consideration. While we recognize that our electoral laws have, all, have allowed for proper conduct of our elections since our independence. As with everything, there is always room for improvement. We therefore look forward to receiving and implementing the recommendations from this exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, friends. Dwyer, uh, these were Roosevelt Skerritt's words on 3rd of November, 2022. He addressed the nation on the 6th of November, 2022. Basically what you heard, he said, and when he called the snap election, what, what, what can you, or, or what did you deduce from what he said to how he acted? You see, um, let me put on my lawyer's cap here. Mm -hmm. He said they're going to implement Sir Dennis Byron's recommendations. He didn't say when. And he didn't say he wouldn't have an election in between. That's the answer that you'll get maybe from him or mm -hmm. from somebody who speaks on his behalf. Okay. But an innocent observer mm -hmm. would presume from what he said that he intends to hold the next election 
with those recommendations in place. But that is not, what, that's not what's going to happen. So there are two ways of looking at that, cynically or innocently. And I've given you the two sides. Shall I repeat? You understand? I understand very well. I'm just trying to okay, process okay. what you said. That's all. Alvin, brother Thomas, you 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 have a big but quarter <laughs> quarter past nine smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Let me let me let me just begin by saying or quoting um from uh from a gentleman known as G. A. Dwyer Astafan. That's a quote from G. A. Dwyer Astafan. You cannot change the country by being submissive. That's a quote from a gentleman called Dwyer Astafan. He quoted that on the 20th of November, 2022. I repeat, you cannot change the country by being submissive, unquote. And that is so true. That is so true, okay? Um, there are a number of things I, I would like, and even that last clip that you played from the prime minister. Um, I don't, I don't, I've gotten to the point now where I don't even want to mention his name. So that's why I deliberately say the prime minister. As I indicated earlier, what is at stake is our democracy. That's what that's at stake now, our democracy. The snap election is just a symptom of the bigger problem, okay? The big problem or the elephant in the room is our democracy, the soul of our nation that is at stake right now. And it's at stake, not just for Dominica, but for the rest of the region. Lofty, when democracy breaks down, as we have seen around the world, wherever that may be, it takes many years and often decades to reverse that downward spiral, okay? Bear in mind what we have seen have happened over the last 15 or more years, a decade plus, almost two decades. And in the process, what normally happens, and, and you can speak more directly to that as someone on the ground, violence and corruption typically flourish. Do we see violence being flourished in the country right now? Do you see corruption being flourished right now? And corruption is not mm -hmm. only in your actions, meaning that what you may take that doesn't belong to you from government, but it also what you say and do, like the, the pronouncement by the prime minister that you just played. That's a level of high corruption. And then what you will find happening now is talents and wealth flee to more stable countries, okay? It also undermines our national security. All of that happens when our democracy is at, 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 at stake and our prosperity, it, it does not just venerate our institutions and norms that are at risk as well, our judiciary, our, our legal, our uh, faith-based civic organization. It, it, it affects all of that. And, and in the final analysis, what happens is that our future national standing and strength and ability to compete Global is compromised. And that is why I, am, I have been appealing at every opportunity I get to call on CARICOM, to call on CARICOM to say something and do something about it, okay? In, in, in the, um, in the um, I, I, I think I referenced it before, in the, in the um, report that was issued back in July, I think it was, or August of 2019, when you had a joint mission August. of August of CARICOM, the Commonwealth, and the OAS, they made the following point. 
they made the following point that is instructive. Listen carefully. On the area of key elections, integrity, principles, and best practices. Listen to what they said. Very instructive. That was part of CARICOM making those comments as well. Representative democracy is the basis of the rule of law and secures the right of all people to participate in political decision making processes of their country. Genuine democratic elections, elections that are credible, inclusive, clean, and competitive, provide the authority for democrat democracy governance and ensure the peaceful transfer of power. Unquote. So here is CARICOM saying, guys, if we do not have an election that is inclusive, that is credible, that is clean, that is competitive, <clears throat> then that undermines the peaceful transfer of power and undermines our democracy. That's CARICOM saying that, you know. CARICOM, the OS and the Commonwealth are saying that. They said so to this administration back in 2019. Quite apart from what the CCJ came afterwards and said in July of this So the point I want to make is at a crossroad lofty. And for all of those listening on our Facebook page or via whatever medium, social medium, Dominica is at a crossroad. This question of snap election is just a tip of the iceberg. Okay. Yeah. Alvin, okay. you seem, the you, fact you, that the you prime seem minister, to be going in and out sometimes, yes. Oh, you hear me? The fact that the prime Prime Minister could come on the 3rd of November and election is a slap in the face of our democracy. And therefore, I will again repeat, you cannot change the country by being submissive. True. All right, folks, it is now quarter to the hour, quarter to 7 o'clock at 7 p.m. We're going to take a, a break, that is, and give you, the listeners and viewers out there, an opportunity to call into the program so that your contributions can be heard out there as well. So you can wait for that time when we open up those telephone lines again the telephone numbers are 245 2396 and also 615 9470 when that time comes around let me take a comment coming in here from augustine lockhart that person right here to me all of the independent candidates okay we have we haven't gotten there as yet augustine lockhart but i'll read it nonetheless um, are enemies of the state. Uh, they were either paid or are just wicked. Either way, they are just hindering the process of stopping this regime. If no one contested, we would never have this sham election. We will get there in just a while to ask Brother Dwyer what he thinks of, you know, the boycott that the official opposition parties, um, they are in the process of now doing and some independent candidates are uh, uh, in the risk as we said. but but we'll get there to that comment in just a bit let me move across to this comment it says here from john alfred when they were asked to come out to protest or demonstrate um they stay at their home and prefer and pretend sorry that they don't know who roosevelt scary is so do i that basically strengthens your point that you made a while ago in that we should not just have a public meeting or protest action for one day and go home thereafter and think that everything is okay. That is what we saw last week, Thursday. And Dwyer, you are, you, are, you are recommending much more in terms of those standing up actions. Of course, and, and, and more than that too. Um, yeah, you, you really, you, you, you do not change and a country by being submissive, you really don't. Um, and, and I don't know if I'm getting ahead of the game here, but you brought up the point of the boycott. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to share my perspective on that now or later? You can go ahead in terms of what, what are your thoughts on the boycotting of the elections from the official opposition parties? Right. Um, first of all, I get the impression that there are some internal problems with the Labour Party. Am I correct? Well, that, that has been the word on the ground for some time. Yes, there are some internal wranglings that um, the general public don't know about. Okay, how many, 
you have 17 seats in 21 seats in Dominica? 21 seats, 21. Okay. How many are held by the Labour Party? Well, before the dissolution. 18-3. Okay. okay. Of those 18 Labour parliamentarians, how many of them are running now? What I know, he discarded about 10. So 10 minus... Um, 18 so you have eight. Ten, eight, yes. Eight. eight. So mm -hmm. that is a whole scale change. And, and prior to that, prior to that, Dwyer, just to concretize that point, in 2019, he discarded 13. Hold on a sec. Yes, yes. He discarded 13 in 2019. And he's discarding another 10 now. Yes, very well. Um, so if I were in the position of one of those persons, I would see myself as like a like a like a like a diaper. Like a like a, a you know the baby's use or the old folks. Yes. The, 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 the pamper. Mm -hmm. Use you and throw you away and bring a next one. Um, I don't believe that inculcates confidence among the comrades. So it would suggest to me, maybe I am I, I'm looking for something. I am not really, but it suggests to me the possibility that all has not been well internally. And maybe the decision for the snap election has an internal dynamic, just as it may have an external dynamic. With that said, I believe that elections should be contested. And based on what I know, which I will confess is very little, if the ULP, it's the ULP, it's called, right? The UWP. I'm sorry, UWP, sorry. If the UWP has limited resources, and even if it doesn't, it's not going to have as much cash as the incumbent. I would still contest the elections and we come across to the people say, look, we don't have the money. These elections are about money. Where has it helped you? Are you more secure than you were? Have a reasonable conversation with people. Appeal to their better spirits. Appeal to their better senses. Contest the election. You never know. You might win nine seats. And that cements you for the next election. To me, if you boycott, you're pulling out and you may have to start all over again at the next election. I prefer to start with some seats than with none. I could be wrong. This is just my opinion. And I don't profess, although I've been in politics for quite a while, I was in parliament for 15 years. I never profess to be a political pundit or expert. I just believe that once you are in a battle, you have to be in the battle. And I don't give them a free pass to the parliament. Let them earn it, whether honestly or otherwise. Let them get in there. I, I, I just don't believe in backing off like that. Again, I could be dead wrong. That's my opinion. Okay, Dwyer, just before, just before Alvin comes in, the, the, how you call it, the reasons that are being given on the ground by the parties, hence their boycotting of this election, is that they are saying that they, are, they have been in that system for much too long, whereby this machinery of Roosevelt's spirit keeps stealing election ever so often on a very uneven playing field. Can I respond that, to the points yes. as you raise them one by one? Yes, go ahead. We'll to, me, that's to, not that a, point. to me, that's not a good explanation. Mm -hmm. Because there's no guarantee mm -hmm. that the next election, he will do anything about it. It means that if he doesn't bring in electoral reform by the next election, what you gonna do that time, boycott again? This is why you need to stand up on the street and in, in, on the political platform and try to get seats in there. Fight, fight for the democracy that Alvin is so correctly saying that you're fighting for, fight for it. Secondly, what they, what they said, what has been said is that on the strength of the CCG words that Alvin quoted a while ago, right. basically this, this, this law lords, I call them, said to the parties in Dominica that what they saw before them, 
they could conclusively say that the elections in Dominica have been tainted. And they warned these parties that there should be no elections again in Dominica with similar tints. And so on that strength, the, 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 the boycotting parties took note of that and they heeded that advice. Your no, the CCJ did not tell the opposition not to contest the election. The CCJ said they shouldn't have elections on the present arrangements. Mm -hmm. Correct? It Correct. didn't say, it didn't say do not have elections. It, I'm sorry, it did it not say that you must have run. To contest. Yes, I understand. Exactly. That. So how are you going to change the status quo? You're not going to change it by staying away from it. You cannot do it. In my opinion, those two reasons are not good reasons. Again. I don't want to be interfering in your business, mm -hmm. but you asked me to come on this program to express my views. And I'm always open to correction and guidance. Always. I prefer to be right. So if I'm saying something that is wrong and one of you guys or one of our listeners can correct me, then I'd humbly agree and say, look, I, this is my new position. I'm now enlightened. In the meantime, those two reasons you've given me are not satisfactory. So just before Alvin comes in, so you're saying categorically clear, Dwyer, that the, the boycotting situation of the opposition parties, that is not, that will not work in their favor, basically how, that, in a crunch. How, how is it going to work? What are they going to gain from it? What are they going to gain? Who, is there any guarantee? Scarit will, will, will bring in the electoral reform that, 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 that Byron is, is proposing. What's the guarantee? Yeah. What about the point that some persons keep pushing that um, the election itself will be not be legit in terms of you know how you mean not be legit the, governments no, 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 no. out there governments out there Budaya, will not look at that election as being legitimate why not a legitimate one in that the opposition why not? parties the more formidable opposition forces they stayed out no 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 cause they stayed out by choice I don't buy that. People get over these things very quickly. The world keeps turning. Life will go on. I don't buy that one either, Lofty. I'm Alvin. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tough here. No. No, no problem. We respect your views, Dwyer. I always yeah. respect your views. That is why you are here to basically speak your mind, and I respect your views in more ways than one. Yes, yeah, thank um, you, Alvin. Before you open the lines. Yes, um, I I tend to disagree with um, Dwyer's position on that particular matter. Um, and again, let us let let's understand and that discussion within the context of what currently obtains as it relates to our electoral process. In a normal scheme of things, where you have an election process that is how should I what word should I use? That is okay. It may not be perfect. All right, Alvin, you, just 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 stick a little pin there. Let me tell yeah. the people the it's now seven o'clock. So the lines are now open. The numbers are 245-2396. The digi line 615-9470. Um, once those call keep, once the calls rather keep coming in, um, I will, you know, kind of have Alvin pause a bit and then take those calls. All right. But Alvin, yes, go ahead. So we have yes. some calls. When when you have the process that we have, when the um the as Dwyer will agree with me. The um the electors list, as it's referred to, is what determines um just to quote and to use the CCJ's comment there, the electors list are central to the legitimate and lawful elections. Unquote. One line. When you have a situation like that whereby the list which is used for election purposes, which is supposed to legitimize and make an election lawful is compromised. And as such, that list, that compromised list, allow for a win by this administration in 2005, 2009, <clears throat> 2014, 2019. It seems to me that if you were to say, I will contest, it's like they say, when anybody that does the same thing over and over and don't see results is a madman, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. 
I think where we are at this stage, the people has to take this thing in their hands. And that's what has to happen. All right, the Alvin, people... just, just stick up in the Alvin. I think we okay. have a caller on the line. Caller, good evening. You are on the Civic program. You are now live. Go right on with your comment. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, good evening. I'm listening to the program, and I would like the doctor to explain to us how the opposition will win if they take part in the election. I mean, they have been taking part for a amount of years. They cannot win. I mean, they only have three seats. How will he expect them to win if they take part in this election? All right, Carla, thank you very much for your point. Do I uh, 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 a question directed at you, basically asking, how do you think that the opposition parties, parties rather, could win if they partook in the decision, in the election, sorry? Second. Well, I am not saying they will win. I am saying, let me just respond to Alvin. Yes. If I'm a politician and I have a political party, I'm not going to allow the chief, the CCJ or any other court to determine whether I contest an election or not, you know. That's not the business of the CCJ. While their judgment is respected and everything, my political judgment tells me that I am in a battle. And the other side, whether they're strong or weak, or the, the, the circumstances which you have outlined, I have contested elections here in St. Kitts and won against a sitting prime minister. But when the people make up their minds, they make up their minds, and a lot of times, when you are in opposition, you don't know your strength unless you've tested it. Unless you've tested it. Even you do polls, people in these small countries are afraid to express themselves to pollsters. But when they go behind the curtain, that's a different matter. So while I respect the opinions of Alvin, of course, and the caller who is asking me how we expect them, I don't necessarily expect them to win. But if I'm in a fight with you and I don't beat you, but I bust up your face, you ain't gonna wanna fight with me again. I have to show you that I have some muscles and I have some will and some spirit and political parties contest elections. They don't sit back. That's my opinion. I ran against Himalayan odds against a prime minister in St. Kitts. No voter ID dead people voting, all kind of story. This control the electoral office, that all kind of story. You never know, once the people are ready, they're gonna vote you in. They, more, more often than not, they don't vote you in, they vote the bums out. They kick the bums out. Give the people a chance to test. Can I just excuse myself for one minute quickly? No problem, no problem. Yes. Alvin, Alvin, you yes. can go ahead. Yes, yes, Alvin. yes. yes. No, I, I, I still don't uh, share or agree with um, Dwight's position. As, as, as we've seen time and time again, um, we've gotten the same result from the 2005, 2009, 2014, 2019 elections. And this is exactly what the Prime Minister knows. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, yeah. No okay, no problem. And that's exactly what the Prime Ministers know that he um that he's run ahead and called the election because he know the the if you might put it this way the rules of the game is skewed towards him winning i mean there's this famous email that i'm sure you may have heard about lofty and i don't know if do i have heard about it famous email that was sent by 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 uh we know uh, his senior counsel saying that don't ever go in the way of electoral reform. The day you do that, you will lose your winning legacy. So in other words, yes. once, he, once he takes the advice of his senior counsel, the UWP would never run for an election. No, 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 no. I'm not suggesting that. And I'm going back again to what you said earlier, which, as I said, I like that quote. You cannot change a country by being submissive. Well, you're being so, submissive so by not contesting the election. That's submitting, that's giving up. For five years, you're giving up because the principle is that he gonna cheat. Well, they're gonna cheat anyway. Doya, and the, 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 the caller that called his question to you was, what, what guarantee? No guarantee. What? Does the opposition have that they would win? No guarantee. 
no guarantee, Lofty, no guarantee. You no but, guarantee. Yeah, but I, but again, but again, Dwyer, again, Dwyer. If I if I may say, um, you see this this. All right, the, the, Al Alvin, just stick up in there. Let's try to entertain another caller here that is okay. coming in on the okay, line. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Caller, good evening. You are, are now live on the Civic Vibes program. Greetings and welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, gentlemen. I got a question for Mr. Astafant. Mr. Astafant, you have read, um, I believe, the CCJ ruling. You have also read, I want to believe, the Observer Missions report on the past elections in Dominica. Considering that CARICOM and OAS and all the spots who uh, all the organizations were part of the Observer Mission, and the report strongly suggested that reforms take place in Dominica. What is your direct, what, what do you believe is the same observer mission, the countries involved, the CARICOM, what do you believe their role in this process should be right now? Despite the fact that Dominic is a sovereign state and can do what they want. What do you believe their role in all of this quagmire that we found ourselves should be now? Well, first, thank you for your question, sir. Shall I answer last year with? Yes, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Thank um, you, caller. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, I have a very cynical approach to observer missions. They are usually made up of politicians or ex-politicians or cronies or bodies of people in office. Then they come in three days before the election and they say the election was this and was that. If you really want to observe an election or the process, you have to come in long before three days prior to the poll to get what's happening on the ground in the electoral office in the constituencies and the whole nine yards. Now, whatever the CCJ judgment says and whatever the observer mission reports, they are, the points are taken and I am an advocate for clean elections, good governance and democracy. And it is because I'm an advocate for that. Me, that is what impels me, that is what drives me to face the imperfections and deal with them, deal with them on the street, on the radio stations, at the polls. Let people say, we know the odds are against us. We know the cheating. We know all of these things, but we're not giving up. We're continuing this fight. You will win people over, if not for this election, certainly for the next. If you blank out yourself for this one, you may have to start from scratch next time. Don't mind you don't have money. Go for it. That's just my opinion. Another won't go for it, but that's just my opinion. That's your opinion, and thanks for your opinion here. First, the numbers to call into the program, they are 44, not 44, sorry, 245-2396. Again, the numbers, they are 245-2396. These numbers are in the chat. I just placed them in the chat, so you can take a look and call into the program here to interact and engage with Brother Dwight Astafan here. And the another one is 615-9470 as we are moving on here. The conversation is very interesting, getting very interesting by the minute, I must say. <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, Whilst we wait on some of the some of the comments, the calls coming in here. Um, so let me just take some of the comments here, Dwyer. Mm -hmm. This one says from Earl Francis, I believe that will only happen in, in um, the next election um, because everyone back home will see that the PM don't care about them and our island, but I'm afraid by that time, it will be too late for our island. All right, that is one comment coming in here. Omar Monel writes, Mr. Astafan is, is referring to Dominica 10 years ago. Um, as, to, as to the impact or the importance of that comment, brother Monel, you need to you know, go a bit deeper here in terms of <laughs> describing Mr. Safans as, as looking at Dominica 10 years ago. Um, uh, Jan, I'd, be, Jan, I'd, be, yes, I'd be happy, I'd be, I'd be happy for, for, for the gentleman to, to expand on it. I, I, I'd be happy for the guidance. Um, John Alfred writes, how do you fight against a complete corrupt system? That is the first part of the question, Dwight. 
Or how do you fight a system like what we have in Dominica? I know so you said you th- it already. What, but what, what do you think? What, what do you think we had here, Lofty? Mm-hmm. You think we had heaven here? I just finished saying that I ran in 1993 against a prime minister. No, no voter IDs, nothing. They had all the money, they had everything. But I plowed ahead. And you know what happened? There was a, there was a tie in 1993. The country was ungovernable. And call two us, years- Call us hold the line for us, please. Yes, do I? Yes. In two years, we had another election and we won every seat in Senkits except one. The opposition, which had very little money, Okay. I, I, I'm glad do I, do I hold on, that point hold on, Alvin. the ungovernable. Hold on, Alvin. Yeah. Caller, yes. Good evening. Yes, I can bite. Mr. Astavan. Yes, earlier sir. Earlier on, you made a statement that you don't change the government by being submissive. Correct. Yet, you are insisting that if you had your way, you would have encouraged the opposition to take part in the elections. Don't you see those two statements as at odds with each other, conflicting with each other? No, sir. But... but That's my question. But... Um, educate me. I don't see the conflict. I believe contesting an election is being aggressive and assertive. I believe standing up on the street is being assertive. I don't see a conflict, but enlighten me. All right. Whilst you wait, some more calls coming in here. Brother brother Thomas? Yes. yes no, I, ju- I just wanted to interject because, again, mm-hmm. based on the last comment that Dwyer made, um, if you don't um, contest and you boycott, I don't think you, you could just say, well, I boycott and let it end there, okay? Mm-hmm. You, you, you boycott, but what do you do next? And I'm glad he raised the point that back in 1993 or whatever year that was, yeah. the, the government was ungovernable. So although the election took place, you guys in St. Kitts did whatever it take to ensure that government would not operate at all. And as a result, like you said, you had a new election called. So I think the strategy of, of, of boycotting ought not to be a strategy of, okay, well, we boycott, so what next? And that is where I agree with what you said earlier, that you don't change your country by being submissive. You have to have <laughs> a sustained event of activities, protests, uh, civil disobedience, or whatever it takes to say, you know what? I'm not taking part in the election, but you are going to win that game anymore. That fight continues. That doesn't mean because you boycott the fight ends, and therefore you allow the government to reign for five years, and you sit back and you say, well, I boycott, I didn't take part, you won, you're lawful, so come next five years, I will decide if I jump in the race or not. No, no. And that's why I'm appealing and saying to the Dominicans listening at home and abroad, the 6th of December is just a date on the calendar. Pay no mind to that date. (laughs) What you have to do now is to continuously protest, revolt, be non-submissive to say to this government that you've done this thing for the last four election cycles. You came to us just a few days ago and said to us that there will be electoral reform. True, you didn't say, well, it's going to happen next week or next month, but Sir Byron gave you a timeline in his letter. And he says exactly, he clearly stated in his letter that all of that um, matters which relates to the reform, including the register of electors list, will be completed by February, March of next year. You have two more years plus in the cycle of this, this, parliament so it is well ahead of your of your duly constituted five year term in office by april this second phase will be completed by april of 2023 Mm -hmm. so so what the opposition needs to do now the opposition forces and i'm not here referring specifically to the opposition party but the opposition forces the resistant forces on the island need to hold prime minister fit to the fire and ensure that that timeline as stipulated in Sir Byron's letter is implemented and make every effort to make his government ungovernable because you'd be a government that would be based on our democracy and and the law, um, illegal, illegitimate. And that is where I think it has to go. It can't be just a question, well, we boycott, 
and kumbaya, kumbaya. No, it has to be boycott in concerted with, with action. Exactly. Yeah, true. Um, let, some, let, let some, me, some comments coming in, Astafan. Some persons okay. are in your corner as well. Eh? Not, not, not everybody. That no, man, that's, that's fine. That's fine. No, no, no. That's um, fine. One goes by the name of Tressy Astafan Kelsic says, staying away <laughs> or running away is being submissive. That person is squarely in your corner. Lester J.B. writes, I agree. Uh, with full you. disclosure. Full disclosure. That's my sister. Who's that? Full disclosure. <laughs> Who's that? Tressy Astafan Kelsic. <laughs> okay, so she's listening. And she's, she's, she's in agreement she's, with you. She is, uh, but that's my sister. Okay, good. Um, Lester JB writes, I agree with Mr. Astafan. They should have gone for it. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. But you know, Lofty, mm -hmm. the, 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 while it is an interesting matter to debate, uh -huh. contesting or not contesting, uh -huh. it, really, it really is a moot point because we are past that. It's not going to happen. It's a mood point. The, 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 the opposition, the, 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 we've had nomination there. I don't think anybody's going to challenge the constitutionality of the election. Is there a move to, to challenge that? I don't think so. Is there? Is anybody contemplating challenging the constitutional? That's a, that's, that's a possibility. It's not outruled completely. The, okay, details well, of that, the details of that may not be... Um, how should I say forthcoming? But it's not an impossibility. Okay. Well, I'd be I'd be interested in finding out the legal basis for that. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a moot point. We're discussing really the election, right. the nomination day has has happened, and elections are on the sixth of December. True. True. Okay. Uh, John Bernard James is writing here. Mr. Stefan, would you go into uh, a game if the results are already known and predetermined? by your opponent and they are against you? Question. Well, you see, the thing is, this is not a game. This is about the survival and success and dignity of a country and the patrimony of its people. And I would go, yes, I would go into a game, even if the likelihood of winning was small, because as I said earlier, I have been in fights as a small boy. I didn't get in a lot of fights, but I got in some fights with people who could fight better than me. I got in some fights with people who couldn't fight, fight as well as I. But the fights that I lost, you know, little small boy fights, the people who I lost to never want to fight with me again because I bruised them up. And I showed them that I had some backbone and I was not willing to just drop and submit to them, and you get respect that way. But I don't see a political campaigning and electioneering as a game. I see it as something you're doing for a country. True. All right, the time is what, 7, 7, 20. Uh, we have like 40 more minutes on the program to go. So folks, please, if you need to call in, now is the time that you can do so. The telephone lines are working. The numbers are 245 2396 and the order being 615-9470. Uh, Marshall, Marshall Lawrence is making a comment here. Why are the two commissioners appointed by the parliamentary opposition leader not coming forward? I guess that is a Excuse question. Excuse me one second. Yes, yes. That is a question, Lawrence, that um, as the fans will not be able to answer, but we in Dominica should be able to provide some answers especially where you directed your question in terms of the opposition um, commissioners. They will have to provide some answers in that department. Let me see if I can get to some more comments here as we're moving along here. Francis says something must be done because Skerritt is coming into power by all means. Let me take that again. Something must be done because Skerritt is coming to power by all means. All right, Bernard Alin writes, what needs to happen now, in my view, is protest after protest after protest, even if, even if in the, even if only in the capital city, that is Bernard's point. In other words, our people need not be submissive. Thank you, Brother Alin, for that point. Christian Nicholas writes, Dominica's election is chalk. Um, chalk and something other islands are cheese. Okay. 
<laughs> I, I, I love that one, Nicholas. In that Dominica's election, that person is writing his chalk and the other island election, they are in the cheese. What we're gonna do, brother, brother Thomas, I think yes. we can I think we can take a little musical interlude now. Okay. To give the people a little, you know, breather. In space. Yeah, a little uh, breather. Uh, uh, go have a drink. And then and then we'll come back. We'll resume right. with the that's good. That's good. With the discussion here. So let All us right. see if we can take a little musical interlude and we'll be right back in just a bit, my people right here. But thank you. Nonetheless, the 300 plus of you here having the discussion with us. Thank you very, very much indeed. Please forgive me, gentlemen. Had a little problem yeah, there. We, yeah, we're just taking a little break. Uh, Dwyer, play some music uh -huh. and we'll be right back. Oh, I do apologize. No problem, no problem. Yeah, a little problem here. Perfect peace. Cry for love in this neighborhood. No water can put out this fire. Only the Lord in this neighborhood. We cry. Folks, yes, you are tuned into the Civic Vibes program today, being the 20th day of November 2022. Our special invited guest here is Brother Dwight Astafan, <coughs> author of St. Kitts and Nevis. And we're discussing that all important subject of the consequences of snap election in Dominica, which we're going through right now, and also in the region by extension. <laughs> we're going to get back to normal programming in just a bit. So please keep it locked. Right, just before, just before we start this song, I want to see everybody like this, please. One more time, I think for the last time today, it's now or never. Some people are actually leading you, or rather leading us into killing each other. Now it's time that we say no to that. You know who you are. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do because there's only one man that can give or take life, Jah the Creator. No one is supposed to take life but Jah Rastafari. So right now we're singing this song to peace in South Africa, not only amongst blacks, but to say to everybody, we say black and white, we wanna be together as one, Jah Rastafari. Yes, Brother Lucky, thank you very much indeed. We want to be as one Black people in this region and hence our conversation we have in this evening. Let's get back to the discussion at hand here. Dwyer, I, I know we have been talking about the boycott. Also, too, on our plates in Dominica, we are, we are hearing and we know of a number of candidates who went up on an independent basis trying to, you know, pull it off as it will, as an independent. You, your thought as an independent candidate. Your thoughts, do I? Well, who are these people? What's that? Uh, who are these people? Are, are they known politically? Are they known to have any affiliation? Um, about maybe 10, 15 percent of them. Well, 5, 10 percent, yes, but the rest are just ordinary Dominicans. Um, well, let me make two quick points. One, 
Don't Expect Much. Um, that song is a little suspect to me. Mm -hmm. um, they, some of them, most of them will not get, maybe none of them will get back their deposits. Um, because they don't have a political machine that they're part of. The second thing, when you said, most of them are ordinary Dominicans. This is a little philosophical point I want to make. I find the so-called ordinary people are the most extraordinary people that we have because the tribulations which they face in life and the accomplishments, they get their three children through school, they become professionals, they become all kinds of things on very limited means, hard work, faith, and so forth, very extraordinary. Um, I just wanted to make that point because it is relevant to what we are saying. Alvin and I are talking about not being submissive. It is time for the so-called ordinary people to do extraordinary things because that is how countries are improved. When so-called ordinary people rise up to do extraordinary things. We had a bit of that here on the 5th of August of this year when the people voted out a government, a very corrupt government, a very corrupt government, the most corrupt government we've ever had in this country. We got rid of them three months ago. People didn't even, a lot of people did not even expect the result that came, but it happened because ordinary people chose to step out of their skins and do extraordinary things. As I said, this is part of what we're talking about here because the election will take place. These so-called independent candidates will go and get their backsides cut. They will lose their deposits. Nobody will ever remember that they ran. It'll be a totally unremarkable farce for them particularly because they have no agenda. They have no mission. They're not an organized party. They may even be puppets of the incumbents, put there, as you say in Dominic, to make as if something really happening. So I, I, that's, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Alvin, thank you for your thoughts, yeah. brother. Do I, Alvin? Just before you come in, we have a voice note here. Let's 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 take a listen on this on this voice note. Lofty, my brother. Good evening. You know, I'm driving there and I'm listening to the conversation on uh, Facebook. Unfortunately, I cannot comment because I'm driving. But I'm listening to the argument of Mr. Dwyer Asafan, and though some of it makes sense, he's. Uh, basically implying that uh, by not participating in the election, by boycotting the election, that uh, the uh, political parties who's doing the boycotting is doomed. And uh, I, I, I don't share that same sentiment because while this will be the first time a, an election will be boycotted in Dominica, we know that elections have been boycotted all around the world. As a matter of fact, elections have been boycotted right in our region. In 1983, in Jamaica, the PNP, under the leadership of the great political leader, Mr. Michael Manley, boycotted an election. And he boycotted that election with similar arguments that we are having here in Dominica. It was on election reform. And uh, his party chose to boycott the election. And they did. A few years later, they won the election and they governed for, I believe, 15 or more years. They lost another election and they came back again and won another election in 2011. So by boycotting the election does not necessarily mean that the party is dead and they have to start from scratch. It's a strategy to reorganize. Uh, bring uh, a coalition force together and bring some cohesiveness in the party as well as in the populace and see what happens from there. But uh, I totally subscribe to boycotting the election. There's no reason to go into that election. It makes absolutely no sense. It's like uh, you go into battle, you have a pistol while the other side has uh, a tank. 
It doesn't make sense. No sense at all. All right. Thank you very much. The person who sent in. But May I respond to that? that? Yes, please. Yes. First he, of all, he touched on the Jamaica situation in 1983. Yeah. I, I, did I say expressly or impliedly that the opposition is doomed if they don't run in this election? Did you get that impression? Either of you? Well, I didn't get the, the, the doom. No, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Okay. I think what, you, what, yeah. What I, I think, tried to say, you go ahead, Alvin. No, no, no. I think your insistence was showing that there, there may be some merit in not boycotting. And that if you don't, it, it's, it takes a little longer to, 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 how should I say, strategize for the next election. And that is why I say, and I think I agree with you, that he froze Laura. the time that we have now. It's, so what we need to discuss now, having boycotted, how do we move forward? Put mm -hmm. the boycott on the side now. And my thing, and again, goes back to a comment that you just made. Ordinary people need to rise up and do extraordinary things. Yeah. And I believe, I believe in, the, in my heart of heart, Lofty, as I sit there, I believe that you have this ordinary people in Dominica now that are going to rise up and do the extraordinary thing. I believe so. I firmly believe so. And, and what it will take, it, it, it will take a series of, of, of protests and events and the, the forces coming together. Bear in mind, bear in mind, that is a movement that we are building and a movement that is coming up against a corrupt mm -hmm. regime that's been there for the last almost 20 years. You, Alvin, you let's, let's stick, let's stick yeah, up in the ahead, Let's take the ahead. callers. Let's give them a little priority now. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, caller, yes, good evening. You are on. Go right on. Is, is that me? Yes, caller, you're on the program live. Go right ahead, please, if you comment. Okay. Um, yeah, I, Mr. Alvin, you are insistent that um, there must be prolonged and continued actions after the protest, after the boycott. I do not know if you listened to the prime minister when he said that what was allowed to happen in the last election with the protest and roadblock would not be allowed to happen. And, and it was simply saying that he would use state power against the people. I need to know from you then, since you are insistent on that protest, which I also believe should happen, and amidst the prime minister's threat of using state power, how would you, what sort of protest would you recommend? Considering uh, yesterday, while the was it yesterday, the day before, while the opposition were having a meeting in town, the police gave permission for the government, the Labour Party, to also go through town, right? At the same time, which could have resulted in conflict and confrontations. And then on the eve of the last elections, the RSS forces came to Dominica and terrorized the villages because they stood up against this regime. So how? Do you recommend that those sustained protests continue in light of those situations where scary is willing to use state power and even regional power against the people? Well, well, if I may answer um, Lofty to the caller, and great question, great question, caller, great question. Let, let me, I, I would not put it this way, come on this program and disclose what one might consider a strategic move. I don't think that's gonna help the movement. And I think we saw what happened to that a couple of days ago when an individual came on a radio station and disclosed a strategic move. And guess what happened? The very next day that that okay. strategic move was mentioned, the government went ahead and issued an SRNO and, and, and gave the Electoral Commission the authority or whatever they needed to, to have 69 symbols for the independent candidate. Prior to that, they only had seven, if my memory serves me correct, seven or nine, whatever that is. And this strategy went out and the government jumped on, on um, right the next day and issued an SRO. And the symbols were increased from seven or six to 69. Now, had that strategy not been told, it means that if persons were planning to go ahead and get nominated as independent, they would have been jammed. Because when they go to get nominated, they only have, say, for example, seven symbols 
and you would have had 19, 20, 21, or whatever the number of independents. So, so I would not venture into that area to devote a strategy. What I can say to you, however, is that whatever is done must be sustained. Let me, let me give an example. In 19, and, and I know sometimes we reference it, and while I will, I will con con concede that the, the era of 79 and the 70s may not be the same era, I'll concede, but you still have some brave souls, and, and as um, Dwyer mentioned, ordinary people that will do extraordinary things. When in 1977, when the union went out on a strike, they went out for one day, and they went out the second day, and they went out the third day, and they went out the fourth day, and they went out the fifth day. And, and guess what? You know they went out for 47 days out. Some of them felt when they were maybe by the 30th day or the 20th day, they must have felt burnt out, you know, and said, yeah, I'm not in that again. This thing I work is. They reported every day at the Goodell Parish Hall. Whether it was 10 that was there, they reported. The next day, they may have had 100, they reported. The next day, they may have had 50, they reported. The next day, they may have had 20, they reported. But they reported here for 47 days, well over a month. What I'm saying is that whatever we do on the ground must be sustained. And if it is protest, we must sustain it. Um, I don't know, Loft, if you had an opportunity to read a very interesting article that Sir Dr. Lennox on the church wrote, it, it appeared in his, I think his Facebook page or somewhere, and was kind of describing a kind of sort of similar situation that occurred way back, well over hundred years ago in, in, in 1826 um, or whatever that is, or 1828, as it relates to um, abolishing elected um, representatives in, 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 in the parliament and how folks then protested, wrote petition and protested and finally, they won in the end. Okay, in 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 I I I I'll don't make a direct reference to it, but but it's not. Yeah, I think it was in 18, 1898, I'm sorry. And finally, in nineteen twenty four, after a one man commission and following protests and all of that, they got what they were asking for. So just to answer the the caller is that whatever we do must be sustained. Um, we must commit to ourselves not to be submissive. And while it is true that um, the last election, the RSS came in with guns and all of that, one might say it's easier said than done, but understand, um, understand that persons have fought to protect their democracy and their lives, even in Dominica, even in Dominica, going back to the Bala and the Jaco and all those folks, and in the region and beyond. So um, we got to support each other. We got to stay in it. We understand it's a fight for the long haul. But I think if we stick in there as a people, I'll be honest with you, the, the turnout on the Bayfront on, on Thursday from what I saw, um, yes, I could argue it could have been bigger. But I think the turnout was quite good. The only problem with that is that we had the activity on Sunday, and like Dwight asked, on Thursday, and like Dwight asked, what happened Friday? What happened Saturday? What happened Sunday? What happened Monday? So I think that's where we got to go. And um, I'm almost certain that, I'm almost certain this time around, justice will prevail. Yeah. Uh, if I may I, laugh it very yes, quickly. Um, no problem. Yes. The, the gentleman who made these comments, um, he said that you basically you don't take a pistol to a fight against people who have tanks. Um, President Obama he used to like to say, you don't take a knife to a gunfight. I beg to differ. It may not sound smart, but you remember the Mau Mau in Kenya fighting against the British? Yep. The Mau Mau, sometimes after receiving a bullet, charged the person shooting them and use what they had to do what they had to do. I'm not advocating That's violence. True. I'm not advocating violence because most of the times, governments will have more power than people who want to unseat them. And many times governments 
if not operating within democratic constraints, will use that power ruthlessly. This is why I said extraordinary and non-submissive. But you can, you can be barehanded and beat somebody with a knife or a gun once you have the skills and the will. So again, I could understand the gentleman's maybe frustration and maybe even despair that every move you make is blocked with force and power and arrogance and so, but you cannot give up. If that is your mission and it is a sacred mission, you cannot give up. Yes, indeed, you can't give up indeed. Folks, the numbers, excellent, I keep excellent. repeating these numbers there, the numbers yes. are calling to the program. We have like 20 more minutes on that all important discussion. We are talking about the consequences <clears throat> of snap election and the tints of these snap elections in particular. As mentioned by Alvin earlier, the numbers are 2452396 and again 6159470. All right. Brother, brother Dwyer, just before we just before we move across to some comments, let me ask you in terms of the statement that I played before. Some persons are, well, obviously, these persons are supporters of the Dominica Labour Body. They keep saying, I'm hearing it around that. Um, Roosevelt is basically a politically savvy brother in that here it is, he got this draft report from Byron. And before, as you alluded to earlier, before these, these, these recommendations could take root, he did what he had to do to, to secure himself and his party another five-year term. Yeah. The opposition persons are saying that was very deceptive of him in that after he pronounced on the 3rd of, of, of November, giving the nation some level of assurance that there would be some movement for a free and fair process, and then he aborted the process halfway. Your, 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 your thoughts, sir? Well, my thoughts are that one, what he did was not politically savvy. It was opportunistic, and that's the word I use at the start of the program. And it was opportunistic for his own political interests, not in the best interest of the country necessarily. And this is why I said, vesting the power in the prime minister to call an election is not democratic. So I don't agree with those who support the prime minister who make the case that, oh, that's a politically savvy guy because we look at gangsters and said, that's a smart man, boy. He really, he really know how to work the system, boy. I got to admire him. I don't admire that. I don't admire that. I don't think that is exceptional. I think it's opportunistic. And any, any gangster or prankster or any person can be opportunistic like that. The, the, the argument by the other side. Basically yes, saying that they were fooled. Well, they were. Because as I told you earlier in response to it, he could always tell you, he didn't say when he was going to effect these reforms as proposed by, by Sir Dennis Byron. But we know that, I mean, I'm away from Dominica, but when I saw it and heard it, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I think I shared that with you a week or so ago, Lofty, privately, that he wants to get in before the report gets in. And he has another five years. So, yeah. Not savvy though, nothing, nothing ingenious about that. And people must stop admiring. You see, what, what we have to stop. I support the Labour Party in St. Kitts. I left a Labour Party cabinet, campaigned against the Prime Minister, and assisted in my own small way to get the Labour Party out. The same people who I assisted in my own little way to get into government, I campaigned in the last two elections to get them out. So while I'm a Labour Party supporter in St. Kitts, and I support the philosophy of the movement, my loyalties are to principles, not to men. So if you are running a party which is built on the principles that I believe in, and you are taking that train off of the rails of those principles, you're not getting my support. And we have to start positioning ourselves attitudinally and intellectually and in conscience 
to offer negative views, not personal, not ridicule, not abuse, but negative views of those who we support. Not because I back you mean everything you do is right. And not because I oppose you means everything you do is wrong. We need to get out of that. That's a form of enslavement, mental enslavement. It, it, it shrinks our minds, puts us in a box. And we're not designed to be put in boxes. True. Alvin, just before Absolutely. you come in, let me take a, a comment from this cadet person. This cadet, this person is right in here. Gentlemen, what do you guys make of the silence of the regional leaders and the open support of Gonzalves for this unscrupulous move by Roosevelt Skerritt? So let's extend the conversation now, yeah. Dwyer, to the region yeah. and the leaders. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I share the comments that Dwyer just made. And um, I think one of the things that we have to um, try to embark upon moving forward is not to speak, as they say, truth to power in disguise, um, to say, well, whatever he did was a smart move. Um, I think we, we have to, as much as possible, um, denounce it. And um, and and if we cannot denounce it in in the in the in the most atrocious way possible, then we should speak truth to it and say, well, yeah, he did or he said that, and even to repeat the nonsense that he's been saying. Of he cut the opposition with the pants down. I mean, understand understand Dominicans. That's why I think ordinary people are going to do extraordinary thing. Understand Dwight, and I'm not sure if, if that has come to your attention. But this prime minister called an election on a Sunday night. I think he came on around eight o'clock or thereabouts. On a Sunday night, when the large portion of the country was going through a natural disaster. Floods I was told like that, hell. Yes. I mean, I was the, told the place that. was flooding. Citizens in this area, in that, that part of the country was running for their lives, literally running. And somebody Roads, lost his life. Yes. Somebody died. Right. Yeah. Roads were brushed away. Um, bridges, you know. No, no. Let that. Let me just correct the the, the record. Here. Nobody died. Um, one oh. man went missing, but they subsequently found him alive. Okay. Oh, God All is right. good. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. And and that was that was against the backdrop that this prime minister announced election. Now, now, um, no. Look at what month are we? We're in the month of November, going into the season of Christmas. All of the season with families, with friends. But what are we doing? He's there promoting a divisive nature in a country. Which leader that divides a country? Red That's a great one. Blue. Red That's a great one. Blue. This is Christmas. And look what he's doing during the season of Christmas. Rather than try to unite the people, he's dividing the people. But didn't you have previous so elections? under his yes. leadership in December. Exactly. And that's the point I'm trying to make. He's been very yes. divisive. So yeah. I think we should, we should call out those, those, those matters. On the question of the original um, um, persons, some may argue, well, you know, it's a waste of time. They are going to do anything. They are, they are on his side and all that kind of stuff. I say no to that. I think we should continue. And like I quoted earlier from the joint CARICOM, Commonwealth OAS report. CARICOM, CARICOM recognized that something needs to be done to our electoral process. Mm -hmm. We need to hold your feet to the fire as much as possible. But beyond that, I think we have to take it to the international community. Um, some of us may feel deflated and say, well, you know, what's happening there is just us, and CARICOM is not, you know, in any shape or form supporting us. But I will tell you, from some discussions I have had lately, the international community is looking at what's going on. Very, very interestingly, they're looking at what's going on. And one aspect of this election that some of us may, may not have touched on it yet, but we know the strong influence of China and the China system of government that operates. And we know the influence of China in Dominica and, and what's going on behind the scenes. So international, international agencies and governments are looking. And that's why I indicated earlier, when you have a situation where your democracy is eroded, it comes with violence and corruption. And it comes with a uh, degradation of, your, of your, your health, your security. Everything is compromised. So I think we should continue pressing 
and holding this um, OECS and the CARICOMs and the, all the various regional organizations fit to the fire. Yeah. While at the same time, we continue our, our, our protest on the ground. All right, do I just before you comment on the on the on the regional leaders and their comments or their support or non support for that move by Roosevelt. Um, I do I just want to correct the record here because a number of persons after I made the statement re no nobody died. A num at least three or four persons tell is telling me here via WhatsApp and other means that one man died and indeed I really saw a death announcement of one Jira man, but I did not. I did not piece it as being part and parcel of the disaster, but they say in the, in the, how you say that, in the mouths of two or three witnesses, let truth be established. So three or four of them told me then that a man died and is as a result of the disaster. So let the record be, be corrected in that department. Yes, Asta fans. Um, well, let me be brutal here, brutally honest. If I were a leader of an OECS or CARICOM country and anybody asked me about the Dominique election, I would not say hoorah and hooray for Prime Minister Skerritt. I would just wish Dominique well because I have to be diplomatic and statesmanlike mm -hmm. and call for elections to be conducted in a peaceful and orderly and transparent manner, which we know is not likely, but it is also not likely to take place in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So that when Mr. Gonzalez speaks, in my opinion, with the greatest of respect, he doesn't speak from a place where he is exemplary in terms of democratic propriety and it is time for people like him to be moved out of the way from the political landscape. We should not be having people, the, 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 the country is at a standstill if it allows a leader to sit on top of the throne, was sort to sit on top of the throne for 20 years and more, That's, that, that shouldn't be. It means the country is not evolving. It means that there's nobody else in the country who is giving a chance or seems to have the ability to take over. And that cannot be true. You, that cannot be true. I am sure in your population, what do you have? 70,000? I'm yeah. sure you have in Dominica, a hundred people who could stand out and not only be leaders of Dominica, but be leaders of any country in the Caribbean. And I'm picking a small number, be leader. Not just a minister. True. I mean, one, one. Exactly. Ralph exactly. Gonzalez and these guys have to take a hike. Exactly. So I don't take what they said too seriously. They need to go. That is, it is five minutes to the off eight o'clock. We have five more minutes here before we go around the table to get mm -hmm. you guys closing comments. But let me just play this in terms of some of the confirmation of this man who died earlier. Let me just play this voice note here. His name is Henson Duran from Petit Souffre, who died through a landslide that swiped, swept this house away lofty. All right. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Earl, for that confirmation and also the others who confirmed that one man died. So, yes, gentlemen, it's four minutes now to the hour of eight o'clock. What a very interesting <laughs> conversation we had, Dwyer and, and Alvin, I can tell you the the feed, the live feed is generating much, much comments here. But, you know, as they say, when you're having fun or when you're passing on very interesting information, how time flies. And that is the time we have to go, you know, around the table to have you guys closing comments. So, Brother Dwyer, on behalf of the many, many folks, I know some, I, I know you're very quote-unquote controversial character, Dwyer. Whenever you comes on here, then, you know, you have the four and the, 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 the those were for and those were against. But I know your man, you're very forthright man. You speak your mind as it were. You don't care who is for and who against, but you speak the truth as to the best of your knowledge. And so we want to thank you for that. The many folks that are viewing at this time, those who are watching at this time, I want to thank you on their behalf and also the Civic Vibes team, Brother Dwyer, for you know always accepting or request whenever it is made for you to appear here on the program. So your final comment, sir. 
Well, first of all, with the comments you have coming in on the wall, mm -hmm. is it safe for me to come to Dominica? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you, you know the reason I speak my mind, Lofty? Uh huh. Because it is intrinsic to me, number one. And number two, you said, I don't care. I do care. It's because I care. If I didn't give a damn, I wouldn't say a thing. Okay? Um, I thank you for the opportunity. I thank Alvin for vigorously engaging um, as is his norm and his standard. I thank your listeners and your viewers. Um, I like debates like this. Debates have to be vigorous. You have to distill the ideas. And out of that distillation process, you want the best ideas to win and to be implemented. So good, wholesome, constructive, objective and honest discussion is a healthy thing. And that prevents, when people are engaged like this, they don't take up knives and guns against each other. Maybe against others because they have to defend themselves, but not with each other. And I'm hoping that more of us in these islands can engage like this so that we can understand the monumental problems which we face internally and externally and start to solve these problems rather than having to deal with tin pot dictators and oppressors who are worse than the English and the French and the Belgians and all of them put together. You know why they're worse? Because they're our own doing it to us. I look forward to our next talk. Thank you very much. And just I to, wish Dominica, I wish Dominica the best. I love Dominica. Just to just to add, just to add, um, Brother Dwyer, most of the persons there, they are saying that you are safe to come to Dominica. And come <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. They're, safe, they're even saying that you're so safe that you can come to run for prime minister in Dominica. That's what <laughs> no, safe. Brother, no, no, no. <laughs> I come, come to run from licks. <laughs> But but thank you nonetheless. Thank you nonetheless, brother. Yeah, man. Always thank nice you. My, hearing from you. My pleasure, man. All the best. All right. One love. Okay. Jagai. Okay. All right, brother Thomas. That leaves you and I to you know wrap yes. up things as it were. Yes. Well, let me let me just to um thank Dwyer for engaging in our discussion this this evening this afternoon. Um, I really enjoy having that conversation with him. Um, I think it's a conversation that transcends beyond us just having that intellectual um, discourse. I think at the end of the day, it will have to boil down to what action that is taken on the ground, in that case, in Dominica. Um, what is at stake, as I said, is our democracy. Our democracy is who we are, who we must be now and forever. That's what, that what determines who we are as a people. Um, our democracy in Dominica is fundamentally at stake. And um, as, we, as we move forward within the next couple of days and weeks, um, depending on how long those events unfold, history will judge what we do at this moment. History will judge on what side um, you are, whether it's on the side of justice or injustice. And that would apply to each of us in our own individual way um, each of the various groups and organizations, um, the various uh, institutions within the region and internationally. And um, I believe the call for action is now. Um, it's, it's a fierce urgency of now. And like our brother Dwyer said, um, the ordinary people needs to rise up and do the extraordinary thing. I believe we are at that moment and I am hopeful that um, these extraordinary things are about to happen to save our democracy in Dominica. All right, Alvin, thank you very, very much, my brother. Um, Woods, don't have enough to express my gratitude or all gratitude at Civic Vibes to you and your invaluable contribution that you keep making to that movement that is on the move for sure. Thank you. You're welcome, Luffy. It's a pleasure. All right, no problem. So yes, folks, that is it. That is where we must bring down the curtains on things here. It is eight o'clock sharp, bang on time. What you can count on us here for at Civic Vibes, we normally start on time and try our very best to end on time. Sometimes we go a little over, but you know, 
based on the discussion. But we always try to stick to time, knowing fully well that you took two hours off your schedule. And so we want you to go back to your normal routine to continue whatever you have to do. So yes, that is it. So on behalf of the team, Paula wasn't here tonight. She said that she couldn't make it, but I know she was locked in. So Paula, good evening to you in a very special way. And on behalf of the Civic Vibes team and all of you, the 300 plus persons who were listening live, who commented, who had the discussion going back and forth on the questions, those of you called, thank you very, very much indeed. And the thousands more of you that I know, because I get the comments, that view this program and listen to this program in the incognito mode. I want to thank you for that. Please share the information. Please don't be selfish about the information. So yes, we will be back if the good Lord above is willing next week, Sunday from yes, the six o'clock hour to 8 p.m. So until then, that is it. My name is Loftus Dura. Just in case you don't know, Alvin Thomas was here tonight. And our guest tonight, out of St. Kitts and Nevis, Brother Dwyer, Astefan, a lawyer by profession. We're going to leave you with this number as we go here from Taurus Riley. Blessed are the poor.